Hi everybody, I'm Rick Hansen with the Foundations of Wellbeing program and I'm delighted to be here uh, with my friend and benefactor and teacher Marcy Shimoff, who is uh, internationally known uh, as an authority on happiness as well as love and she's written two great books about it, Happy for No Reason and Love for No Reason. And Marcy has the distinction of being uh, one of the very top, if not the top, female nonfiction authors in America. Her books have been translated into dozens of languages. She travels around the world. And the reason I want to talk with her today in the framework of the gratitude pillar uh, of the 12 pillars of well-being is because for me, she's a unique package as someone who very authentically has done inner practices to change herself for the better, and also someone who has dreamed big dreams. She's swung for the fences and hit a lot of home runs, while at the same time not selling her soul in the process and not losing sight of the things that really matter. Also, I'm personally very grateful to Marcy. So Marcy, it's a pleasure to have you here with us, and thank you for doing this. Oh, thank you, Rick. Uh, you know I am a huge fan of you and your work, and I love this program that you're doing with Foundations. It's just mm. fantastic, so I'm honored to be part of it. You're someone who has been disciplined at developing those good habits, you know, through habituating, as you put it, to things. You've been disciplined at developing good habits, and you've done a lot of inner practices. Mm. And um, I wonder if we could talk for a bit here about the relationship between doing practices, you know, making efforts inside the mind uh, over time, and the relationship between that and happiness, love, and worldly success. And so, first off, you know, why should people make efforts? Uh, if we're not already Buddha, God, whatever, you know, why do we have to make efforts? Why, why not just kind of roll along? Yeah, well... You don't have to make efforts um, if you don't want a result. <laughs> if we want results in life, this is what the game of life is about. It's about you get you, if you want a result, you do particular practices to get there. If you want to be a good tennis player, you practice the habits of a good tennis player. If you want to play the piano, you practice the habits of a piano player, a good piano player. If you want to be happier, you practice the habits of happy people. If you want to be more successful, you practice the habits of successful people. So this is, you know, we, we give our life energy by these practices so that they become more of, of our natural state. I mean, hmm. as I told you, Rick, I was not a happy person. I was, I, I would, back in those high school days, I would have given myself a D plus in happiness. Hmm. I'd say now, thanks to practices, I'd give myself an A to an A minus. I mean, I'm always still in progress. There's always more. But, you know, I, I, I have to say, I, I used to say I'd give myself an A to an A minus. These days, i pretty much a solid A. And it's not that things aren't challenging. Things still come along that are challenging. But I've got these practices to do, and they really work. And, uh, you know, I mentioned I was just in Russia and Ukraine. And um, Russia, Ukraine, and Hungary. And can I share a specific practice that I learned that came yeah. in really handy there? That's right. I would like to know more about your particular practices concretely uh, and things that other people can do too. People are always asking me if there's a fast track to happiness. And, you know, there are no fast tracks. I mean, how do I say this? I, everything takes practice. But, um, but there are two, I believe, fastest tracks to get mm. to ha greater happiness if I had, if I had to pick two. The two practices I would pick would be gratitude, which I know you're talking a lot about this month, this month of gratitude, and forgiveness. Yeah. And those are it. You know, those are, those are for me, the, the fast tracks. I think of them one on each shoulder. I've got gratitude. I've got happiness. I've got forgiveness. And so let me just share with you a little bit about forgiveness. Um, I think that when we hold on to anger and resentment, it's the biggest block in our experience of, of greater joy in life. And uh, the practice that I use for forgiveness, there are many forgiveness practices. It's a little bit bizarre, and I can't answer it scientifically why it works. It's called Ho'oponopono. It's based on a Kahuna Hawaiian tradition. Why? That's why all the O's and the P's in it. You never have to be able to pronounce the word Ho'oponopono. And it's simply a practice, they call it of, of, um, of cleansing, cleansing the heart. 
And all you do is you internally say towards this person, situation um, that you're angry at, or it even could be towards yourself, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. Those four phrases, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. Mm -hmm. And I've had such profound experiences in doing this practice that I, I, you know, I could write an entire book about it. Right, and, and just to emphasize this, in the moment, it's an experiment. You don't need to believe the words. You don't need to. You're definitely not waiving your own rights. And you're trying it out and seeing what happens. That's great. So I'm still really interested in what do you do every day? Uh, we're okay, talking about right. the power practice. Or what are some of your you know, kind of steady go-tos that really make a difference for you? So I wake up every morning with, with gratitude. I start my morning, first thing, what am I grateful for? I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful to be wherever it is that I am, you know. And what I've found also is that gratitude, you need, we need to have gratitude for even the lessons and the hard stuff. And that, that even helps too. You know, I'm grateful that I'm, that I'm in this situation where I'm really being challenged to learn a particular lesson. And, um, and then I have, you know, I... I have all kinds of routines that I do. I do prayers and blessings before my meals. Mm. I mean, there's been research with Curlian photography that shows that when you bless food, the energy around the food changes. Um, I can't say whether that's true. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I, I'm not speaking about the validity of that science. But I just know I feel better when I settle down and I do blessings over food. Mm.